everyone and welcome to episode 21 of our Raspberry Pi series and in today's episode we're going to look at troubleshooting some common problems that you get with the Raspberry Pi and Open Media Vault. We are going to look at how to fix interface problems if you can't get into the dashboard. We are also going to look at resetting your password. We're going to look at changing the port of your um, Open Media Vault installation and we're going to be using a utility called OMV First Aid. Um, I've also experienced a problem of my own since our last episode where um, I can't log into my Open Media Vault interface it's on a login loop so every time I press login and um, basically it just keeps going around and around in circles asking me to log in again so we're going to look at trying to solve that problem today so if you guys are ready we're going to get straight on and we're going to problem solve some problems that you may get on your open media vault and your RC Pi okay so we're going to start today by remoting into our Raspberry Pi through SSH so we've opened up a terminal session and we're going to put in our um, SSH command to get into our Raspberry Pi which is SSH TAC P for the port, 1984, our username, and then our IP address of our Raspberry Pi. We're going to log in with our password. So what we're looking at today is we're looking at a utility called First Aid. So we're going to go sudo, and it's called, it's called OMV TAC First Aid. And we're going to put in our password. So this interface gives you a dashboard so that you can come in and configure your Open Media Vault um, through the command line. Um, we're just going to go briefly through these different um, sections here just to show you what you can do. So if you wanted to change any of the interface settings on here, like the IP address and things like that, you can come into here. And it shows you all your different networks that are available on your um, Raspberry Pi. So you can come in here and you can change any of these, including the Docker interface. F0 is normally your main network that you can use, that is used to connect to your main network. And the rest of these networks in here are really bridge networks and ones that are used within Docker. So we're going to come out of here for now. Just so you know that you can actually use that to edit the network interfaces. So from here you can configure the web control panel. Now this comes in handy if you need to change the port. Um, so let's say you want it to run something like Nginx Proxy Manager or something like that. Um, you can actually do this through the command line and you can change the port that you want to access the, um, the actual dashboard of Open Media Vault. So you can do that within here. Again, we just can press cancel. So go back into the interface. Down here, you can change the control panel administrator password. Now this is very useful if you set up a server that you haven't accessed for a while and you've forgotten your password. You can come into here, you click on three and you can then enter a new password. And then what you do then is go back to your dashboard and then you put in your username, which will be admin, and you put in your password from there, the new password that you've set and you'll be able to get access again into the interface. So this option here, reset failed login attempt counter, if you um, by mistake forget your password and you're trying to access it too many times, Open Media Vault will just ban your account. It'll ban the, um, the use of you logging in. So you'd have to come in here and if you click on reset failed login attempt counter, so if you have notifications enabled through email, etc., if you get an email through that talks about banned users, then you know that maybe potentially someone is trying to access your, um, your dashboard and that has maybe raised some concerns for you. You might want to come in here, change your password, check your network and make sure that everything is secured. So this is a useful security measure that Open Media Vault provides. And again, also, if you lock yourself out, you can always unlock it with that. So restore configuration backup. That is if you've made a configuration backup. It is what it is. It can restore it from there. So we're going to check the configuration status file here. It says the file is valid. So obviously that is fine. So we don't have to do any changes with the configuration status. Check RRD database. We're going to run that. So this is going to check all the files. So I'm just going to wait now. It says all RRD database files are valid. Again, that's fine. We just come through. If anything was invalid in there, you can always look online and search out what it actually means, what it does, and you can configure it from there. So from here, you can click on clear local upload package repository. So this is just do some, some housekeeping, some cleaning up. Okay, so we're going to go back into our first aid again. And we're going to click on clean app. So this is just going to clean up your app for you. Another useful command for just doing a bit of housekeeping and cleaning up and saving a bit of storage. Okay, so we're going to go back into first aid. Clear web web control panel cache. That's obviously if something is not working and you can't log in, you're getting any issues with that, you can always come in and clean the cache. I'm not going to do it now because I don't need to. And you can submit a diagnostic report to the administrator. So I think that just comes back to yourself. So yeah, so there you are. That's all there is about first aid. 
So the thing to really take home about this utility is that you can reset your password. I think that's probably the main thing you'll use it for. If you forget and you can't get access to your Open Media Vault, this is a very helpful utility and can save you a lot of headache and time. So since our previous episode, I have tried to log back into our Open Media Vault interface and I'm, try I'm clicking log in and it just seems to go on a loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi using a terminal window. Okay, we're going to clear this out and we're going to use a utility called um, DFTACH. And yeah, already you can see there is a problem here. So this is a problem with our Docker folder. It's 100% full. So most likely this is to do with an imaging problem. So it's obviously downloading too many images. We need to check why that is. So if you look here under our dev roots, we can see that it is 110 gig and 100% full. So our problem resides on our root partition and in particular, um, it's this var lib docker overlay folder here. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna cd into that folder now. And obviously we won't have the permissions to read that. So we're gonna have to go sudo and then ls. And you can see there is a lot of image images in there. So I think the problem is, is that it's been downloading lots of images and filling up our space. So we need to find out why that has happened. So what we could do is we can minimize this and come into Portainer and we're going to log in. And we're going to go into our containers and we're going to come down to images. So you can see there is a problem here with our LIDAR stack. It is obviously continuously downloading Wow, a lot and lot of um, images, which is obviously filling up our drive. So what we're going to do is we need to get rid of all these images. So we're going to go to our um, containers first of all, and we're going to stop our LIDAR container. We're going to come back into our images again. And then we're going to have to go through and delete all these LIDAR ones here. So all the ones that say unused here. Okay, so we're going to leave bit worn, but we're going to look at... So all the LIDAR containers here, we're going to try and remove. So we're going to click on each one. Now, there may be an easier way of doing this through the command line. But just to be on the safe side, I want to make sure that what we are removing, we're not removing any used... Um, containers and we want to force them away as well. We want to force delete them all. So we're just going to manually go through and select them all. This could take a little while, but I'd rather do it manually to know that we're not removing anything that we shouldn't be, like this one that's in here. I don't want to remove that because it says it's being used. So all the unused ones we're going to get rid of. And you can see it's downloading nightly builds here as well. So that could be potentially the problem as well. So I'm going to, need to look at that container find out why that is. So we're going to do some further troubleshooting from here, but at least by removing all these, we should be able to basically write to the log files because there'll be space and we should be able to get into the OMV interface again. This is what we want to achieve. And this is a very ridiculous amount of images. If any of you guys know why this is happening, if you could let me know in the comments below, I'd be much appreciated because it just seems bizarre. I mean, I'm going to do some more further research, um, but obviously before I put this out, so I may even know the solution. But, um, you know, this is a bizarre problem. And it's, it seems to only be happening with that LIDAR container. So I might recreate that. I did try to update these last week when we did the updating. Um, we did the updating episode. And I think from there, it may have caused some problems. So it's something I did prior to that. But that wasn't in the episode, the LIDAR one. But I did notice that I had some issues downloading the containers. Now, it may be that I was on, because of the amount of containers that have been downloaded for LIDAR, that they put me on a block. Because as I said, there is a restriction on the amount of um, containers that you can pull down from these repositories. So I think maybe that's why I was finding it you know, difficult to download um, um, some updates for some other containers. We may have to go back through this again at a later date, but I want to make sure that I help you guys if you run into problems like this. And it's great to have problems like this because you can work on solutions. And this list is going on. I mean, we're only halfway there now. A 
Okie doke. So we've got them all ticked now. And as you can see, there is absolute incredible amounts of containers it's pulling down. I mean, no wonder I, I've run out of space. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this little tick box next to where it says remove, this little down arrow. And then we're going to click force remove. And then we're going to force remove the images. So that will take a little while to run through and delete all them. Okay, so that's now finished. We're just going to have a quick look again. See, that lidar's being used, so we're going to leave that. And there's quite a few other unused images in here, which we could get rid of now. Which I'm actually going to do now, just to clear up some more space. So, all the ones that say unused, we're just going to get rid of. And you should clean out these images as much as you can anyway, just to free up some space. There's not many of them, not as many as the lidar ones, so... All the ones that says unused, make sure that you delete them. Okay, so we're going to go force remove. Okay, so now we're going to go back into our terminal window. And then we're going to run our command again. And as you can see, we now have space. So we've only got 8% being used now. We've got 98 gig available. So that was some serious um, space being used by them images. Now I'm going to troubleshoot why that is. And this seems to have happened since I installed Watchtower last week. And I attempted to update LIDAR container. When I updated that LIDAR container, it seemed to uh, continuously pull these images. Now I think there might be some bug in there. Um, LIDAR is actually a beta. It's under, it's under product, you know, it's not actually a finished product. So there might be something wrong with that container itself. I will find out why it happened. Um, but now, if we come back to our Open Media Vault and we refresh, so now we're going to try and log in to our Open Media Vault again, see if it's fixed the problem. And there you are, we are now back in. So if you have a problem where you can't access your interface and you are on a continuous loop with Open Media Vault, it's most likely because of a problem with the storage. So either one of the mounts hasn't mounted correctly and it's dumping all your um, log files and storage straight onto your device's um, you know, root memory rather than the external hard drive, or it's because of a problem with one of the containers and the Docker containers is pulling down images and filling up the space. It's always good to keep an eye on this to make sure that this doesn't happen. But obviously, when you try to log in, you'll see that you have problems. You won't be able to access file shares, things like that. Things will start going wrong. So that's just a few common problems that you can get on your Raspberry Pi and how to solve them. Um, I haven't obviously covered everything. I've just come across these problems over the last few weeks. So Open Media Vault First Aid is a very useful tool to have. And it's very good at getting you back into your system and doing some general configurations. The problem that we have with storage also shows that it's important to keep an eye on your storage and make sure that your mounts are mounted correctly and make sure that you're not getting overthrown with them images. So you need to make sure that you're going in and periodically manually deleting them images from within Portainer. So if you guys got any benefit out of today's episode, if you can hit that like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified of any new content that we upload. In the description box below, we have listed all the hardware that we have found to be compatible with the Raspberry Pi and in particular with our Raspberry Pi series. If you guys make any purchases using them links, we get a little bit of small commission back from each sale. It doesn't cost you any extra to use them links and for those people that have used them so far, we really do thank you guys for using them. So all that's left for me to say now is thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.